Hello, viewers. I welcome you to ACNN Channel Television, and you are watching live the midday prayer. And I thank you for being with us at this moment. May I, my prayer is that God will continue to strengthen us and hear our prayers in the name of Jesus Christ. Father, we thank you. We worship you. We give you glory for the opportunity you've given us once again to come here and hear your word and pray. Lord, we pray and ask, O oh God, may you hearken unto us this hour in the name of Jesus Christ. Amen. Now, brethren, we are going on on the team that we'll be considering, and it says, the fear of the Lord. And this hour, I want to subtitle it and say, the fear of the Lord is stronghold and a fortress for believers. The fear of the Lord is stronghold and fortress for the believers. And I will be reading from Proverbs chapter 14, and I will take verse 26 and 27. Proverbs 14, 26 and 27. And it says, he who fears the Lord has a secure fortress. And for his children, it will be a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snare of death. I will also take a second, another place, and read Job chapter 1. Job chapter 1 and verse 8. Then the Lord said to Satan, Have you considered my servant Job? There is no one on earth like him. He is blameless and upright, a man who fears God and shuns evil. Verse 9 says, Does Job fear God for nothing? Satan replied, Have you not put a hedge around him? and his household, and everything he has. You have blessed the work of his hands, so that the flo his flocks and herds are spread throughout the land. This is the word of God. Now, we are saying that the fear of the Lord is a stronghold and a fortress for the believers. What is a, strong, a, 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 a stronghold? A stronghold is a place where someone can be, can be hiding and he is secured. A fortress is a place where someone, a place that is well fortified. A place that evil or call it weapons may not be able to penetrate. And a place where there is security. Now we want to look at how can we fear God? How can the fear of God be a, a secure, a, be, grant us security as children of God? From the passage where we read, from where we took our text, he said that he who fears the Lord has a secured fortress and a refuge. The fear of the Lord is a fountain of life, turning a man from the snares of death. Now, it means that when you fear God, God places a lot of responsibilities in your life. One is that because you fear him, he secures you. Because you fear him, you are hiding in an unreachable place by the devil. Because you fear him, the Lord will not allow your life to be wasted. There are many people who have outstanding testimonies. How God has delivered them from the snares of death. And that is why... The scripture says that even though I pass through the shadow of death, I fear no evil. Why? Because I fear God. 
I want to let you know, from this scripture we've read, when you fear God, you have no reason to be afraid of man. Because man will definitely not do you anything, except by the permission of God himself. From the passage where we read, the scripture said that God was very pleased with Job to the extent that he had to tell Satan, as we have been going up and down, touching and destroying, have you considered my servant Job? <laughs> um, and the devil replied. He said, does Job fear you for nothing? Have you not secured him? Have you not placed a barricade in his life against him so that the enemy cannot touch him? Now, he goes to remind us what the, the prophet said, that he who fears God, the Lord is your stronghold. The Lord is your fortress. Fear God and fear nothing else. That's what it means. And for Job, he feared God. And even the devil knew it, that Job fears God. And even the devil knew it, that because of the fear of God in the life of Job, Job worships God, Job reverences God, Job acknowledges God, Job has placed everything about his life in the hand of God, his life became untouchable for him. So as a child of God, in your home, in your family, in the society where you are, you can be like Job and stand out because you fear God. Job, in fact, Python will not permit us, but if we look at the life of Job critically, his life did not lack in any aspect. Call it worship. Call it sacrifice. In every aspect, because he gave God the true position where he belongs and where he should be placed. And because of that, devil did not take notice of him. Devil did not even want to, tempt, to try until God said, you have been going around, you have been trying every other thing. What of this, my servant? My problem is that sometimes even the devil knows more than we know. He understands God more than we do. And that can run us into trouble. And the devil said, does Job fear you for nothing? So there is a reason for fearing God. I'm not saying that we should baguette and say, God, I must fear you so that you do this. Let it be natural, flowing from your heart, from your mind, like a stream that never ceases, that you honor and reverence God and leave the rest of what God is going to do in your life. The fear of God, as we said from the beginning, is the beginning of wisdom. As you fear God, the wisdom calls it and knows that God even himself knows that this man does not fear me for nothing. You are doing your part and God is doing his part. So for us, as children of God, we need to learn how to be upright before God. Bible said that Job was blameless because he feared God. He was not blameless because he was living in a world where evil does not exist. No. He was blameless because whenever the enemy come around, in fact, the events and the things that are happening in the society have made him to prepare himself ahead. How are we prepared to serve God? God. And God will be a stronghold for us. The scripture, you know, taking, when you read the book of Job carefully, you understand that even Job made sacrifices for his children. Each time they go out, he will bring sacrifices and make for each and every one of them. Because he said, even if they have sinned, God will forgive them. <laughs> but today, sometimes, we, are, we feel too big even to approach God and say, Father, I am sorry. For Job, whether known or unknown, he says, Lord, forgive me. Sometimes we feel too big, too um, strong. I said, 
If I say it now, what will people talk about me? Let me tell you, it does not matter what people talk about you. What God says about you is what matters most. For Job, God said, this is my servant. For Job, this God, God said, have you considered him? He's a man that is upright. What a good testimony. So brethren, as we want to pray, as we want to call on God, have you, do you understand that when you fear God, you have nothing to fear about men? When you fear God, God will protect you. The fear of God in your life will scare away other evils that comes around you. So people of God, now the Peter in 2 Peter, the scripture said, honor all men, love the brotherhood, and fear God. So for Peter, he said, I did not say you should not honor people. Honor, honor them, respect them, love them, but God, fear him. You are not afraid, of, you are, he's not saying fear God because God is terrible or God is wicked. No, he's saying it because the, the word there to fear him so that he will now be your stronghold is to honor him. Give him the right position. Worship him, acknowledge him. For Job, he understood it very well. And that became a secure place for him. The enemy did not, was thinking about others. He couldn't think about Job. Because he knows that this man, he have, no, he have no issue with God. So once again, in Romans chapter 8, from 31 following, the scripture says, in all this, in all these things, if God is for us, who will be against us? Because you fear God, God will be for you. And no man will rise against you. Even when death is knocking at the door. If God did not permit it, it cannot happen. Even when accident is knocking. If God did not permit it, it cannot happen. For Job, when disaster wanted to come, the devil was looking for a way to see it. He couldn't throw it. Because God has surrounded him. And until God gave the devil permission, he could not tamper with Job. And I want to tell you also that you as a child of God, as you serve God and fear God endlessly and do his will and worship and acknowledge him, before the devil can be permitted to touch you, he must go to God. God must permit him. And I know that God does not permit evil. But God can allow, him, allow you to pass through some certain things and he will still prove to you that he can deliver you and set free. He did it in the life of Job. After everything that he had was destroyed. Even the only person who would have been source of comfort to him said, what is still remaining? Just curse God and die. Let me know that it is done. But Job understood. He knew that this God does not deserve to abuse in any form because of what he was passing through. So many ways we have abused God. So many ways we say this God does not exist. Is God really seeing what I'm passing through? As a child of God, when you do that, it means that you are not acknowledging what God has, is doing in your life. When you fear this God, you fear no other thing else. There are people who feared God, even in the terrible times, God delivered them. God saved their lives. God became a stronghold for them. There are children, people who tested and proved, even in the scriptures, even when death was knocking, they did not die again. Daniel was put in the lion's den. God was there to deliver him. When you fear God, you don't need to fear death. And meanwhile, even what we call death here is not the real final about death. death the second death is the hellfire. 
And for us as children of God, the one we call dead here, I'm afraid I will die. I'm afraid this thing will happen. It's just that you will just be translated if you are a child of God from this realm to another realm, which is far more better. But because of what we are, we, we, the people we are missing, we may not like to go there now. But the ultimate, the reason is that we need to really fear God. And the worst that can happen is that someone may, out of uh, uh, saying, ah, I don't know whether this God is able to deliver me, and then you yield to the will of the other, uh, enemy, then he will take you and take you entirely. But when you submit to God strongly, God will uphold you. People of God, as you fear God, there are many, God will deliver your children. You don't even need to go and be doing rituals and sacrifices, going to the moon, going to the sun, going to the hill, going to the mountain. Wherever you are, reverence and acknowledge God. Your family, your children, your wife is untouchable. There are so many instances where God has delivered people from terrible attacks, from robbery, from kidnapping, from so many things. You may not know what is going on, but because of you that is faithful to God, fearing God and acknowledging God somewhere, God will choose to continue to deliver you. So people of God, we are about to pray this hour. And I want you to ask God to create a new heart in your life and make you to obey him and do his will. And as you do that, the Lord will form a barrier against your enemies. And it doesn't matter the weapon they use. The word of God, where we read, say that the fear of the Lord is a stronghold. The fear of the Lord is a secured fortress. The fear of the Lord is a secured stronghold where you run into and you are safe. Satan acknowledged that in the book of Job. Can you say, Lord, I want to fear nothing else but you. And as I do that, and as I acknowledge you, and as I serve you, and as I commit myself to you, your will shall be done in my life. I want to lead us to pray. Wherever you are, rising or sitting, or I want you to join us in this prayer. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Almighty God and our Father, we thank you for the word of God. We thank you, God, for giving us opportunity to express through your word and understand that the fear of you, that when we are in you, our life is untouchable. I pray for my hearers and viewers this hour, and I ask that, Lord, even as we hold unto you, even as we submit ourselves unto you, even as we commit our entire and total life into your hand, may you be a fortress for your children. The devil is, cannot touch our life and prevail. The enemy cannot destroy our properties, our homes, and whatsoever we have. Our children, our wives, O oh Lord and our God, we also pray for the church of God and we ask that we shall continue to prevail against the wish and the will of the devil because our stronghold, our fortress is in you. We are hidden in you and you alone. Thank you, Heavenly Father. Thank you, mighty God. For in Jesus' mighty name, we have prayed. We also want to pray for the diocese of Bishop Ajay Crowder. We also want to pray for the ministry of the work of God. We want to ask God for fruitfulness, for increase, for divine multiplication. Heavenly Father, we pray and ask that as your children go on in carrying the gospel to the next level, reaching the unreached, through so many mediums. Father, may you, O oh God, help and let your gospel extend and may your people be saved and be delivered in the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father, for hearing us. In Jesus' name, we have prayed. Amen. Thank you, viewers, and I appreciate you, and I ask you to remember tomorrow, this time, we also meet 
and talk to God. God bless you. Mm-hmm.